This is Tutorial 1, Case 1. We begin by opening a file called Alltech. You'll find that in your Excel 1, Case 1 folder. The instructions in the textbook tell us to do a file save as. We'll save it right in the Case 1 folder where we retrieved it. And we're going to call it Alltech Bicycles. And then we'll click Save. In step two, they tell us to insert three rows at the top of our first sheet. So if you highlight three rows, and then you right click and choose insert, it will insert three rows and push the other data down. In cell A1, they want us to type all tech bicycles, and then use the alt enter function to create a second line in the same cell and we'll type in income statement. When I press enter you'll see how it heightened the row there. Now it doesn't look very good at this point but later on we're going to be widening this column so this will be straightened out a little bit later. In cell A2 we are to type for the year ended December 31st 2011 through December 31st 2013. Of course we always press enter after we finish typing in a cell. And in this range, where the net sales and cost of sales go, I'm going to go ahead and highlight that area because I'm going to be typing in the numbers that we were given. Now notice when I press enter here how the cursor moves me to the next line. Okay, now that I have those in, I'm going to go ahead to step five and I'm going to enter in our expenses. Now it's not really a problem that these labels are laying over column C, but it is a little bit annoying. So I think what I'll do is I'll go up and click between the B and the C, and I'm going to drag this um, column width to make it wider. And then that way I'll feel more comfortable when I'm typing in my numbers. I'm going to pause the video and finish this typing, and I'll get back. I've gone ahead and typed in all of the numbers that we were given in steps 4, 5, and 6, and so I'm ready for step 7. In step 7, in row 8, we want to calculate the gross margin. Gross margin is equal to our net sales, or C6, minus the cost of sales, or C7. Once I have that formula, I can use my fill handle and fill that to the right. Now we want to calculate, and you can see that I've already done it here, uh, we want to calculate our total operating expenses. That formula is equal sum, and then we highlight the cells that we want to add up, or C11 through C14. Operating income in row 17 is going to be the difference between gross margin and total operating expenses. That formula will be equal to gross margin, or C8, minus C15, our total operating expenses. And again, I'm going to use the fill handle here. Now we were given the number for the other income, and so we're going to add these two numbers together. Operating income and other income will be our pre-tax income. So that's going to be equal to C17 plus C18. You could have also used a sum function here. That would have worked just fine. And now we're going to get down to net income. Net income is equal to our pre-tax income, and then we need to subtract what we paid for income taxes. So equal C19 minus C20 is the formula, and then we'll use our fill handle and we'll fill to the right. And then we have shares of stock. I calculate the earnings per share. So we're going to take the net income, the 3211, or what's in cell C22, and we're going to divide it by the number of shares. So the formula is equal C22 divided by C24. When we press enter, we see that each shareholder earned about 88 cents per share. We'll fill that to the right. Now's a good time to save your file. You can just click on this little save button in the quick access toolbar there and that's just a quick save, or you can always press Control S. You should get in the habit of saving your file every several minutes. I'm now on step 13, 
and it asked me to use the spell checker to correct any misspellings. So let's go up to review. The review tab is where we would review our document just before we printed it. So that's the place to find spelling. It asks us, since my cursor is at the bottom, do you want to continue checking from the beginning? And yes, I do. The first misspelled word that came up is, it thinks, Altec. Well, that's a proper noun. It's not in the dictionary. And if I were on my own computer, I would choose Add to Dictionary. But since this is a college computer, I don't want to change anything. So I'm going to tell it to ignore all occurrences of Altec. The next word that came up misspelled is administrative. It's obviously misspelled. So we're going to change, and in case this is in there twice, I'm going to ch choose change all. Earnings is missing the R. So I'll choose change all in case there were multiple misspellings of that word. All right, now the spell check is complete. And of course, it's still a good idea to double check things yourself. The spell checker doesn't pick up everything. It asks us in cell A18, so let's scroll down to A18, to capitalize the I in income. Now we can do that by pressing the F2 function key to go in the edit mode, or we can double click in the cell. If you double click in the cell, you can move your cursor and erase the lowercase i and type a capital I. Be sure to press enter when you're finished. In step 15, we begin to change our column widths. For column A, they want that to be 18 characters. So if you put your cursor between the A and the B and you get that four-sided arrow and you click and you drag, you can drag it to, by looking at the little tip there, to 18. And by the way, don't ever worry if you're a little under or a little over. Column B, they want to be 25 characters, and we've gone ahead and widened that. So I'll just widen it a little bit more. Auto fit the height of row 1. Now row 1, because we widened it, now looks okay, but it's too deep. To auto fit a row, you click between the 1 and the 2, and then double click. And that auto fits, or makes it the best height to accommodate the data that's in the cell. They ask us to rename sheet 1 as income statement. So come down to the sheet tab, double click, and type in your title. I don't like to use spaces in my sheet tab name, so I'm going to just put those words together. In sheet 2, they want this to be called documentation. And be sure to press enter when you're finished. And then they want us to move the documentation sheet in front of or to the left of the income statement. So you do that by simply dragging it over and dropping it. In the documentation sheet, they want us to enter in cell 1, all tech bicycles. In cell A3, author. In cell A4, date. And in cell A5, purpose. Now we'll go and we'll fill these out in column B, you'll put your name. In column B, you'll put today's date. The purpose is listed. And so that's what your documentation sheet should look like. You'll want to save your file and then print this in landscape orientation. And they ask you to print the entire workbook, including the documentation sheet. So you'll go to page layout. For orientation, you'll choose Landscape. And then when you go to Print with File Print, you'll want to be sure that it says Print Entire Workbook. And that way, you're going to end up with two pages. You can preview them before you print by clicking this little button with the one and the two. And there's a image of what Alltech Bicycles will look like. So then you go ahead and print. This is the end of the video.